Hi, my name is Lo, and I'll show you how to create a cave in the Intensity Engine. So I'm in the engine right now, and the client can move around. And I enter Edit Mode by pressing E. So E for Edit. And then I have the cursor here, which I can, as you can see, it marks a certain size of cube on which I work. So by pressing the G key, and using the mouse wheel while G is still pressed, I can change the size, so I can work on a very small size, a very large size. I'll work with a medium size for now. So the most basic thing I can do is to select an area. I just click on one point and then drag. And then once the area is selected, I use the mouse wheel, and in one direction it pulls cubes up, in the other direction it pushes them down, so I can create a depression in the ground or a raised area. So we're going to create a cake, so we'll start by creating a large raised area like so. So as you can see it's already, it's, a, it's, a, it's an actual physical part of the world, I can't walk through it. And now we'll start to create a cave inside this, but first let's create, uh, let's just move this over here and click on lighting, low quality. So this is how the scene looks with the current lighting. It's a bit dark, so let's go to lighting settings and change the ambient light from 5 to say 32. So that's the amount of light that is always uh, appearing, the basic light level. And let's do lighting again. See, it's a little less dark, so that's good enough for now. Now let's re-enter edit mode. So the first thing that's obvious is that this is sort of a very regular flat shape, and we want it to look more like a natural cave. So to do that, first we press space to deselect anything. So if I had selected an area, pressing space would deselect it. And then if I hold down the control key, you can see that the cursor is now green. And then by using the mouse wheel, I can pull up areas like so. So let's pull it up a little bit more near the ground. And when, once it seems OK, I'll calculate lighting again. And you can see that indeed it's, if I look at it from the side, you can see that it's a, an irregular, more natural looking surface. If I had used a smaller cube size, it might look even more natural, but for now let's stick with that. So I've created a, sort of an irregular surface. Now let's actually create an entrance way here for the cave. So again I select some cubes. And once more I use the mouse wheel to push into the area. And just like that I have sort of an entrance into a small enclosed space. Let's see how it looks with lighting. So it's naturally quite dark, because there's no light. So let's create a light. Insert light. Place it on the ground. Well, maybe we'll put it a bit uh, higher, actually. Let's uh, put it near the entrance, like so. And let's make it, uh, say, mostly green. So a high level of green and lower levels of red and blue. Let's give it a radius of 300. You can actually see the radius by this circle that's drawn around it. So if the radius was, say, 50, that's about the area to which it casts light. So 300 is much larger. And let's hit calculate, and you can see now there's a bright green light in this area, sort of an eerie green. So this is the beginning, sort of a simple entrance way. I can of course smooth out these walls which are a little flat and uh, unnatural looking, just the way, in the same manner that I made the entrance way wall uneven, which we saw previously, but I won't do that again. Let's see how we can actually make this a cave. So. Again, in edit mode, I can select some cubes. And I can actually push into the floor. Let's move a little forward here. And do that successively. 
sort of create an area in the ground like so. Let's open up a little region there. And let's sort of walk down into this and see what I've created. So looking out, that's where we came from. And there are these stairs which I can jump back out of. Going back down, you can see I've created this small area. Everything's very close quarters here. But naturally I can open things up in any way that I want. So I can create a very large area here. Which I've now fallen into. And that's where I came from. So in this way I can successively create pretty much any type of scenery that I want. So I'll just create some stairs by means of which I can walk back out normally. So now I can sort of jump out. And you can see I can I've created this area here. And I can continue to do that and create a more complicated area, smooth out the regular surfaces to make it more interesting. Finally, let's do calculate lighting on the highest level, which uses anti-aliasing with the ray tracing. And you can see what the final version looks like. So here, of course, it's quite dark. I could add a light there if I wanted. And moving back out, let's look again at the entranceway. So that's pretty much it. The, the basics of editing are fairly simple. Once you get used to them, you can have a lot of fun creating scenes with them. A lot of this is uh, stuff that we've inherited from Sour Breton or the Cube 2 engine, which has this excellent editing capability built into it. You can even edit with multiple people on the same server. On top of that, most of the GUI that you've seen, for example, this stuff here with the lighting and the menu, is special to the intensity engine. So let me just point out another nice feature here. I can click on manage entities and I get a list of all the things that I've created. So player would be me and that's the unique ID. And that and light is the light that I've created. If I click on the light it automatically focuses me towards it. So you can see I'm looking directly at the light. And that's convenient if you've created entities that are far away or you don't remember exactly where they are and so forth. And then you can edit their properties so we can make this light, let's say we want to make it more reddish for now. Again, cal calculate light. And you can see that now the cave has sort of a red light leading into it. Okay, that's it for now.